This is Beetle Five. Welcome to another one of my reaction videos. I have with me the Ginger here. Hello, everyone. And today we will be reacting to the death battle between Batman Beyond and Spider-Man 2099. Now, this one, uh, another Batman versus Spider-Man death battle because they've done the original guys. So, uh, Batman Beyond, his suit, it's a bit different than Batman's because it's like yeah. uh, it's it's got more gadgets, I think, and it's like hey, he could like legit fly. But on the other hand, Spider-Man 2099 is like stronger and faster than the regular spider-man but i know for a fact he doesn't have the spider sense so i think that might be a big um disadvantage towards him Ooh, yeah. so, so right now i'm gonna have to place my vote on batman beyond i really think he's gonna win this fight right now but uh i don't know you don't know yet okay i don't know a lot between both of them bro so. all right so uh let's get this Wait, video I, have to go, I guess i would put i guess batman all right um, yeah makes sense all right so let's get this video started then in three Two, one, go. <laughs> the future. Oh, nice. I love this movie. It has robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. Oh, yeah. yeah the future right. still has those, but they're even cooler because of all the sweet gadgets. Like Terry McGinnis, right. the Batman Beyond. And Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man from 2099. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Mm, Shattered Dimensions, that's a great game. Weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. All right. Terry McGinnis was your average futuristic high school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future girlfriend. Yeah, you know, the usual. Until one fateful day when Terry got into a fight with a group of jokers. What's he got against comedians? <laughs> no, no. <I'm> not <laughs> freaking Will Ferrell. <laughs> you know, like, the Joker. Ah, but with a Z, because it's the future. Well, naturally. After possibly oh the most nice. dangerous motorcycle chase ever put on television. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, he's got a helmet. Terry found himself inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly Bruce, billionaire Bruce named Wayne. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Here, he stumbled upon the most important revelation in his life. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> well, more like he All the suits. Batman. He retired from crime fighting years ago, because, you know, uh. age is a bitch. Wait a minute. After decades of secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the Batcave? For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized on the spot. Yeah! <laughs> anyway, Terry's roller coaster of a day still wasn't over. Turns out, his dad got murdered. Dad? Well, shit. Haha. Uh -huh. So he did what any emotionally charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit, but not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest and most advanced bat Oh suit. man. Terry McKinnis didn't just become the all new Batman. He was Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? It's basically that. Yeah, that's generally what it is. Freaking red. The bat suit's nanotechnology greatly enhances his strength and provides several thin yet strong layers of ballistic and environmental protection. And he can fly! He can soar faster than a speeding future car, and he's really nimble in the air. Plus, he can always give his punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. Yeah, There's so more gadgets. Device, a a cloaking device. device. Finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater breather, thermal and binocular vision, extendable spikes on his arms, oh flashbang grenades, triple-weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters <laughs> no laughing matter. And don't forget That's all crazy. those sweet, sweet batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before. Wow. And they come in a variety of delightful flavors, like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's got a solid throwing arm and can even disarm multiple opponents with a single shot. But if he's feeling a bit lazy, he can always just use his arm launchers to fire battering discs. Also, when anyone gets in too close, the whole suit can act like a man-sized taser. The electric oh. shock is strong enough to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man, er, Batman. Terry's a master <laughs> martial artist with plenty of training from legends like former Robin Dick Grayson, totally huh. real ninja Kyrie Tanaga, and the former Dark Knight himself. 
Huh. Once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Bruce Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor. He's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his direct link to the bat suit from the bat cave. Good thing, too, since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective. At least not compared to the old man. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an expert analyst. Plus, the Batcave has. Why do we need to know about Bruce Wayne? We know about Bruce Wayne. The goddamn Batman. Yeah, come on. Everybody knows about Bruce Wayne. Jesus. I need to know more about Terry. I haven't seen his show in years. Having an old guy barking orders in your ears sounds annoying. Like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. At least I imagine, because I didn't have one. Well, Terry is Bruce Wayne's secret son. Oh! Oh shit, he is! In an effort to ensure there would always be a Batman, government boogie woman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten... Amanda- Amanda Waller! That's the woman who, um, composed the Suicide Squad! Remember Suicide Squad? That's her! Wow! That's cool! And bonus, I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered! Good for him! Huh! Also, he's got all the benefits from Bruce's kick-ass genes! Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter. Strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. Faster than a Mach 19 missile. Large eye beams and this giant boulder. He's Yo, he defeated Superman to too! See that shit? Nice! What's so special about a penny? Just look at it. Holy colossal currency, Batman! <laughs> Penny's diameter is easily 20 feet wide and is frequently dated from the 1940s. This means wow. the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. <laughs> That's more than enough to crush all the bones in your foot. But not Terry. He was up and at him like nothing happened. Wow. I mean, this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, skilled enough to defeat lizard people and the Justice Lords. In a newer trust scene, he could fire of pulse blasts and even outraced an intercontinental missile, which can reach speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour. Oh my That's god. That's over 19 times the speed of sound. He's still no Bruce Wayne, though. He's kind of a punk and doesn't have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman classic. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. <laughs> do have his heart though <laughs> maybe not but he has accomplished huh. feats equal to his predecessor like fighting I'm, superman i'm gonna say he's used kryptonite the joker threat once and for all clearly terry mcginnis has more than earned the title of batman you're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's batman i am batman Nice. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely have my oh, phone on Batman right now. Unfortunate spoiler: the year 2099 kind of sucks. Plagued by Aww. a massive civil war between humans and mutants, the world fell into a dystopian ruin of violence and anarchy. The heroic age had come to an end. Hmm. But some people still wanted a sequel. Enter <laughs> Miguel O'Hara, a child prodigy turned super genius with a penchant for genetic tinkering. Miguel's skills landed him a job at one of the biggest companies in the world, Alchemax, where he got to work trying to rebuild one of the greatest heroes of all time, Spider-Man. Oh. Specifically, he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. But hmm. like most of the 21st century superheroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and legend. Miguel had to build his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. Unfortunately, Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, Miguel wound up accidentally getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the Spider-Man of 2099. Oh, but nice. future Spider-Man isn't quite the same as your grandpappy Spider. Oh, look to Stanley! <laughs> the superhuman strength, speed, durability, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. He can oh. wall crawl though, using retractable talons on his oh. fingers and toes, Oh Jesus! Also make for fairly wow, weapons. so he's really not much he's human not anymore. Like a vampire. Yeah, he's he not really human. You, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost instantly. He also had rapid he healing. He not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are superfied. Oh, okay. He can hear noises from miles away, see in the dark, and make out far off and fast moving objects with ease. In huh. fact, his senses are so acute. 
He wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like any Spider-Man, he can shoot webs from his hands. Except his webs are real. He doesn't need compact web shooters. Yeah, his are shooters. His are legit webs. He has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk, with a tensile strength similar to steel. Ew. Whoa! Okay, the original Spider-Man always kind of grossed me out, but this guy's powers are... Oh shit, I remember oh, that. I that was when he mutated. Agree with you. Well, yeah, one day he's just your average dweeb doing sciencey stuff like you, and the next he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff? Who wouldn't be weirded out? Miguel saw his newfound power as a curse. A blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that didn't stop him from fighting crime, complete with his own Spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing the use of his talons without tearing the fabric. He also huh. wears a web-like cape made of light bite, which lets him glide through the air. Whoa, light bright! I remember oh, that. oh my <laughs> god, I still fucking have one of those! Find a way to stop Up in my closet, I got one! Light bite. Oh, I yeah, love whatever. those. The suit looks pretty cool, so I hate to spoil the mood, but it's actually just a run-of-the-mill costume for Act the Day of the Dead Festival. No, <laughs> really. Though after meeting the present-day Peter Parker, Miguel received a much-needed upgrade. His Ooh. new suit contains synthesized unstable molecule fabric mixed with Kevlar, greatly improving his defense. This suit can survive a shot from a howitzer artillery cannon. Ooh. A common M777 military howitzer fires 92-pound shells at 2,200 feet per second. Ooh. That hits with over 100 tons of force. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing. A hit which shattered a tempered glass window and sent Miguel flying over two dozen feet. And the new suit has explosives, hologram projectors, infrared scanning, and it's even got wings and rocket boosters on the feet. Wait, that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, but he's at his best when he's working with his holographic assistant, Lila, or the Lyrate Lifeform Approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. <laughs> she keeps track of Miguel's life signs and surroundings. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. She can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th decimal in a millisecond, which is flippin' amazing. Fun huh. fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. Huh. <laughs> That's clever. Not anybody in 2099 seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. <laughs> okay, seriously, how did they lose so much information in less than 100 years? Remember, kids, always back up your files. It'll <laughs> Jesus well, Christ. Them, Miguel got over his emo phase and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast to the chest, resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. More than that, he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. What even is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when everybody thought Zeppelins were the hot new thing. Because who doesn't like riding a giant flammable balloon full of explosive Ah! Uh. Find me up! Assuming it's composed of steel, and roughly estimating its size compared to the Spider-Man on the roof, then comparing the Empire State Building's mooring mast, this should weigh, at most, 200 uh. tons. So basically, oh. Miguel's a badass, and he proved it in the most epic. Yo, oh, he he's lifting Mjolnir. In the world with Captain wow. America, wow. inherited the most legendary weapon of them all. He's defeated Mjolnir. both the the original Venom Mjolnir and the 2099 Venom. Grant him its warrior powers. Miguel didn't use it as a weapon. But what? Oh, one was a fake held by a wannabe Mjolnir. Thor, but one of them was the real deal. Okay. With his dominance asserted, Miguel created the utopian future a person could only dream of. And wow. you thought Peter Parker was cool. This Spider-Man is at the top. This game was really good. Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me. Ready to save the universe and looking good while doing it. <laughs> Loved Shadow Dimensions. It was a great game. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate. All righty. Oh, but first, the so here's what I'm in the Here's what I'm thinking here. I think they both have really, really equal footing in terms of, like, their gadgetry, flying, and, like, you know, of, of, of all the shit that they can take, their feats. But, however, I think that Spider-Man 2099 has more strength and he has senses probably outdo Batman Beyond's gadgets. 
Plus, there was that feat where he managed to pull over the thing with um, with Spider Man that was freaking two hundred tons, while while Batman Beyond only managed to lift the penny that was I think one hundred and sixty six tons. Yeah. So, I, I, as much as I love Batman, I, I I like him to win, but I I feel like this is gonna go towards Spider Man. What do you think? Hey, I was gonna go that way, but I feel like. It, Batman Beyond has so much more tools that he can use, and he's also faster. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough it, choice. I think they might be stronger. I don't know which one's stronger. I forget, but I'm just, I'm gonna have to they, place my he's like Bruce Wayne, one of the best fighters. Right. They also have their own people to help them. It's an assistant, so it's like right. To All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Spider Man then. What's your vote? I'm gonna go with Batman. All righty. Here we go then. These are two of my favorite. He Best yeah, well, Keep an eye out. yeah. See, he does get Bruce and uh, and and Spider-Man gets Layla. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, Bozo. I was brooding there. <laughs> Who the shock are you? Huh. All right, here we go. Oh, nice turnaround. Oh. Oh. Right back at you, fatty. Oh yeah, come on. He's done that shit with Green Goblin dozens of times. <laughs> hey, Lila. Get me a reading of this vampire guy, yeah? Of course, Miguel. I can't identify his tech or fighting style. But I can try hacking his suit. Oh. <laughs> Oh, come on! Oh, there we go. I'm like, you should break that. Oh. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. Damn. That hurt. Something's trying to hack your suit. Our new friend, no doubt. Ha ha! going. That's really cool. Get in close and finish this quick. No problem. Can my fangs pierce his suit? I think so. Then I'll finish this myself. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, crap! His chest! Oh, no! I guess that's one way to do it. Oh, man! I'll never get tired of seeing people blow up. Oh! such a blast! Thanks to Bruce's counsel, Terry uses. I thought his suit could have taken that! And his electric shock that can short out large yeah. machines. Oh, right. Yeah, unlike Bruce, the poor girl wasn't really built for combat. And while mm. her hacking skills were top notch, the isolated bat cave had the defenses to hold her up. Mm. Even still, Terry's stats edged out Miguel's in more ways than one. When it came to maneuverability and durability, they were mostly even. Yeah. Both could dodge bullets and weave through the air. That's what Both I thought. could survive heavy ballistic hits. Mm. But unlike Terry, Miguel's never outraced anything yeah. faster than a Mark 19 ballistic missile. Oh. For physical strength, Terry had him beat too. Recall that boulder that he lifted underwater. This took place in Superman. They didn't mention a boulder. They mentioned a penny. The boulder was likely composed of sedimentary dark limestone, the most common rock type around that location. So we compared Terry's height to the boulder, applied the density for limestone, and subtracted the weight reduced by underwater oh, points on. to find the boulder's weight to be 192 tons. And he tossed it aside like it was nothing. Terry's peak. Yeah, they could have mentioned this uh, beforehand because they definitely didn't. Assuming Miguel applied his fair share when holding up that antenna, his best strength feat we know of is at max 100 tons. Uh. He's a Spider-Man. Spider-Man can lift more than that, right? Not usually. Technically, mm, Miguel's twenty-five tons. So huh? different from Peter's that we shouldn't really scale him to other Spider-Man. But for the benefit of the doubt, let's do it anyway. We'll check out two of Spider-Man's most impressive strength feats. The first is the time he braced a private jet while it was landing. Look at him. He's literally the landing gear. According to Spider-Man himself, the plane's total weight was at most 115,000 pounds. Adding the thrust from a Whittle W1 engine, which this small jet is most likely to have an engine comparable to, this feat comes out to 58 tons. 
Not even huh. close to Terry's 200. Then there was this one time where Spidey had to push way past his limits to lift what he offhandedly compared It's unlikely to Peter can replicate this level of strength normally without plane, proper motivation. It's likely he's accurate here, but huh. given the time period, that's still only 130 tons at most. It's clear Terry had a pretty sizable physical advantage. And just because Terry's mind wasn't as fine-tuned as the original Batman's didn't mean he's dumb. Even more, Miguel never trained like Terry did. Hell, he never really had much formal training at all. But Terry was trained by ninjas, stealth artists, and other crime fighters. Hey, I'm glad he won. I like Batman better than Spider-Man anyway, so. Didn't have a spider sense. Terry just had to wait I like Spider-Man more than Batman. Oh, no. Oh, see, I, I, I like Batman more. It was, it was a good fight. Oh, yeah, it was an awesome fight. Yeah, it was a very good fight. Oh, that's, that's the I mean, Yeah, I was going to say, I was really unsure who was going to win it, so I, I didn't feel too disappointed. So, uh, that was a very good one. Yeah. All right. Stick around. We're about to announce All right. Who we got? And Who's it gonna be? Commentary on this episode. Click that little box over there and start a first. Minute. All right. Be somebody awesome. Grab one of these shirts too. On the season finale of Death Battle season four. <gasps> Sephiroth. Yes. Sephiroth versus Virgil. Oh! <laughs> oh my God! That is going to be so. Cool, you got Virgil from Devil May Cry versus Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, that's gonna be a good. That's gonna be a good fight. I personally, I think I. That's gonna be close. Cause I would normally instantly say Virgil, but Sephiroth is stupid skilled. Oh man, that's gonna require some thinking. I cannot wait for that fight. That's gonna be amazing. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment on the such a plan in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Laters! Later.